let's look at conveying system you can see that bird you see that building on that picture the question is how can you how are you going to move from the ground floor to the 153rd floor that's a good question so conveying system usually helps you helps to move a building occupants um have to move occupants and goods also from one location to another good why good because if you need to if you have a mechanical equipment on the roof here how do you move that if you need to change the small compressor of the unit how do you do that you will not be installing a tower crane for that you need to move that from inside the building so you're usually going to have an elevator to do that a conveying system a freight elevator to do that so these are some of the standard that give you some of the specification on elevator system. So let's talk about elevators. That is one of the elevators doors, as you can see them. Um, but you need to know that to know that um, as I mentioned, if elevator are conveying devices, conveying machines that are used that move passengers or goods vertically, because there are other systems that move horizontally. That's going to be something else. Uh, those are moving walls. These one move vertically. They're called elevator. So between building floors. So uh, we need to mention here that um, usually in terms of building codes, we usually when you have more than four stories, you need to have at least an elevator. But look into your building code to see what is required. Or maybe if you are doing the costing, maybe you're going to already have that in your drawings so there are three types of elevator passenger elevator freight elevator and hospital elevators so hospital is for hospital but in in standard building you're going to have passengers and freight elevators even in hospital buildings you're going to have the hospital elevator because they are too large uh, and uh, you also have freight elevators also so passenger elevators carry people a small load and um, they can be either made of uh, what we call hydraulic elevators or traction elevators and um, they can carry up to maybe from 500 somewhere 500 somewhere to 2500 kilograms of uh, in terms of weight that is about 8 to 32 people and their speed is about um, I would say 60 to 180 180 uh, meter per minute that is their speed when we talk about elevators there are some characteristics what is the size what is the weight what is the weight it, it, it can carry and what is the speed so um those are the design type criteria if you want of the elevator now let's talk a little bit about the technology you need to know that okay usually we have two types as i just mentioned what you have here on the um, on 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 your, your left is what they call hydraulic elevators so hydraulic elevators is usually a fluid uh, driven hydraulic jack okay these are uh, as you can see uh, these are the jacks here as you can see this is a buffer this is a jack uh this is a fluid um, tank here so uh, it is a fluid driven hydraulic jack that is used to lift the this jack lift the cabin up and down okay that's basically what we're talking about uh, hydraulic uh, type elevator then we also have traction type elevator this we here on the right the traction type elevators uh, is basically a traction machine you can see here on the top the traction machines um that move the elevator car or the elevator cabin here with cables you're going to have cables here you can see cable there's a cable here traveling cable like traveling cable um through a pulley we have a pulley here somewhere here so we have a, a gearless machine there are some with gear some with gearless so this is to give you an idea as a cost estimator you need to understand this difference because the the cost of the agility is not going to be the same as the cost of the traction and the agility is going to be using when you have high rise buildings they will not use hydraulic they will probably use traction so um that is uh, basically it so this is just under comparison in the table that will help you to better understand uh, depending on the stories of the building you have smaller stories you're going to use hydraulic you have a higher story buildings you're going to use traction geared or gearless okay so basically that's what it means so in terms of speed also hydraulic speed very low then um 
traction is very high, like 500 feet per minute here. So that's what it means. In terms of elevator design, we just mentioned that more than four story you need an elevator, but you also need to know that um, for fire fire service access, you're gonna need also another eleva elevator some, sometimes. So one rule of thumb is you need one elevator for each uh, 45,000 um, usable square foot. Usable square foot. That's what it means. And usually you're gonna have a maximum of eight elevator per group of elevator in case of large, large building. Cannot put, you're gonna scatter a little bit, one group of elevators and the group, and one group on the northern part of the building and the group on the southern part of the building. Provide one freight elevator for every three passenger elevator. If your building is gonna have three passenger elevator, please add a fourth that is gonna be the freight elevator. And the freight elevator should be able to carry a weight of at least uh, 4,000 pounds, as you can see, yeah, because you're going to be carrying uh, mechanical machines to bring from one floor to another. And when you have a building with more than four stories, usually you're going to have some elevators that are assigned for lower stories and other elevators are assigned for higher stories. So um, that's what it means. For instance, in this, I'm just giving some explanation here that um, you're going to have one elevator, that, an elevator that will be moving from floor one to floor 10 only. Okay, which stops. You want to go to floor uh, 7, you're going to use their low rise elevators. You want to go to floor 17, you don't use the low rise, you use the express elevators. That takes you directly from floor 1 to floor 10. At floor 10, now you get out. Uh, after the elevator, you take down now the high rise elevator that will move from 10 to 17. Then, what about how do you cost an elevator? Usually, the way you cost an elevator, and again, this is taken from Aris means. The way you cost an, an the elevator is based on you have the base cost, then you add the adjustment based on capacity, uh, travel, um, normal travel, the speed, and the number of stops. For instance, here for this electric traction elevator, passenger elevator, again passenger because freight is going to be another cost. Uh, the base cost for two thousand pounds, uh, two hundred feet per minute, four stop only. The cost is um, this is the cost. This is the base cost, one hundred fifty-three thousand. Then, what if your elevator was three thousand pound capacity? You're gonna to need to add this five thousand to that, five thousand two hundred fifty. Then, what if you needed a more faster elevator? Then maybe five hundred feet per minute. You're gonna to need to add thirty-five. What if uh, your building instead of having four four stop mean four story basically? Then, if four story, if it is four story and it is approximately ten feet height per story, that means forty vertical linear foot. Then, if you you have five stories, or if you have four story but the vertical linear foot is sixty, you're going to need to adjust here, okay? Uh, twelve hundred dollars per vertical linear foot above forty. If you have more than four stops. You're gonna to need to add uh, the the call button for the elevators uh, and other things. That's gonna be about uh, eleven thousand dollars each for each additional stuff. So this is the kind of thing you can combine everything here to come out with an approximate cost of your elevator. Now let's talk about something else here. We have elevator. We also have escalator. Escalator is just a moving stairway, so you have a stair that moves, okay? It used to transport people in large number in, on a shorter distance. Usually you're going to use, have that in the shopping malls or something or something like that. And here I've given you some example of the cost of the escalator, just to give you an idea. So you can read here and you can use that. Um, Again, this RS means 2017. I think adjusted. I got uh, just adjusted. This is an example of an escalator, as you can see in a shopping mall. This is an example. Then you also have what is called moving walk. Move, moving walk uh, uh, basically uh, move people uh, horizontally, right? And you also have a lift. Lift can be wheelchair lift, platform lift. Like this is a lift, and some sort of elevator that lift car. Uh, maybe you are, you are in a building that is very complex. Uh, you need to bring cars downstairs. You don't have space for car to be moving, turning around. You have an elevator. People just get in the elevator, bring the cars down, and uh, that's it. You just pack. So, um, 
that's basically what it means. In these moving walk or side moving side walks, you see that they move transport large more people horizontally. Usually mostly in airport you can see that. When people are tired a little bit, you want to you don't want to people to walk two, three steps and uh, just stay there. You, you put that so that people you force in order to force people to move in order to avoid congestion. These are some of the cars, per linear food, right? Um, uh, what John mentioned that in our project, we didn't have any elevator. So maybe don't need to think about that. Let's talk a little bit now about plumbing. Uh, 